Greetings, fellow human. I hope you're having a super fantastic day. My name is Baron, and in today's video, we're going to talk all about the new Canon EOS RP. We're going to see what all the hullabaloo is about. I just really wanted to say hullabaloo, but we're going to find out whether or not you should be angry like everyone else on YouTube, or if you should care at all, or if it's going to be a nice camera. We're going to explore those options. Yeah. Just a quick disclaimer right here at the top of the video, I have not actually touched this camera. This is not a camera review. This is a discussion about this camera and what it might mean to you. I'm not going to run through all of the specs that the camera has because well, it has the same kinds of specs that you would expect from most cameras and that's not what's most important today. So this new camera, the EOS RP, it's an entry level camera. Its price point is really compelling. It's $1,299. That's cheaper than any other full frame mirrorless camera that's on the market. That alone means it's going to sell a ton. And this is an entry level camera, not an entry level priced camera, but an actual entry level camera. Canon made this camera and they're marketing this camera to family shooters, casual shooters, uh, professionals who might need a second or third body just as a backup when they're on a professional shoot. The feature set of this camera is not made to be the top of the line. This is made to be easy to use and accessible to people who are not professionals, but still have enough functionality that a professional can get the job done with. It's got extensive auto mode features and you know, all the special like art filters and stuff that you can use. It has ridiculously easy to use and understand menus that you can, like anybody who's used a phone can use this camera. It's the smallest camera that Canon's ever made simply because, you know, family shooters and casual shooters don't want to carry around a big, giant, hefty camera. So a small, tiny little one is awesome. And because small cameras are awesome, but people might have larger hands and their pinkies might flop around uncontrollably, they actually made a grip extender for it that you can buy in flashy, bright colors. That's not something that a professional is looking for. That's something that a family shooter or a casual shooter is going to think that's cool. It is kind of cool. It's all bright and shiny. Like, ooh, look at me. I've got a camera. One thing this camera was definitely not made for is video. Canon doesn't want to do video things in their smaller cameras, apparently. This one especially. As I'm sure you already knew because everyone is complaining about it, there is no dual pixel autofocus in the 4K. It's, it's not there. The weirdest one by far is the omission of 24 frames per second in 1080. I mean, it's only the most used frame rate of all time. Why wouldn't you put it in a camera? There's no excuse for that one. That's, that's just weird. It also is a little weird that they bothered to put a microphone and a headphone jack in this camera when it's obvious that video was not a priority for them, but I don't know, I guess they had some space on the side of the camera they needed to fill with something and they're like, yeah, let's put that on there. Hoorah! The bottom line here is that this camera is not made for professional video shooting or even semi-professional video shooting. This one was made for casual entry level video shooting. I do think that Canon really missed the mark here with a couple of the video functions you know, notwithstanding what everyone else actually wants in the camera. But there's one thing that I think they really missed the mark on. But as Hugh Brownstone says, hold that thought. So is this camera any good? Not if you're comparing it to its closest price range in full frame mirrorless cameras like the a7 III and the Z6. These cameras are packed full of features that professionals really want. It's got all kinds of functionality that they need, but it, this camera, the RP, is quite a bit cheaper by, I don't know, what is that, 500, 600 bucks? It's a lot cheaper than both of those cameras. And it's not made for a professional. But yes, if you're looking at it as far as ease of use, accessibility, brand recognition, everybody knows Canon, even your grandma's like, oh, Canon cameras, those are the good ones, right? You know how grandmas are, they, they only know Canon. <laughs> I don't know a single grandma that knows anything about Nikon. You show me a grandma that knows Nikon. You show me that and I'll be amazed. That'd be cool. Or Sony, Sony grandma. 
So can we get some Sony grandmas out there? And because of that price point, this camera is gonna just fly off the shelves. It's gonna grow wings and like flap off the shelves into people's homes. And they're gonna then use it. They're, they'll probably have paid for it, but there will be flapping. And because they're gonna sell so many of these because the price point is so low, that means a lot of people who are just getting into photography, you know, they wanna up their Instagram game, their phone's no longer taking care of it, they gotta get a good camera, and grandma buys them the Canon or, <laughs> or whatever. You're gonna be able to find this camera on a shelf at Walmart. You're gonna be able to find this camera at Best Buy. All of these people are going to have this camera, they're gonna use this camera, and those that enjoy photography are going to continue to use this camera and if they upgrade what are they going to do they're going to upgrade to canon because they had a canon and they liked their canon now it's time for a bigger better can so really focusing in and marketing to this entry level kind of photographer that's that's a big deal that's that's you're going to be growing your future customers if you can if you can give them something that they like using they're going to stick with it that's how canon built up the reputation that they've had forever and they're going to keep doing it it's actually kind of smart we see what you're doing canon Merchandising. You remember earlier in the video when I made that Hugh Brownstone reference? Well, we're going to get to that now. Although I do think Canon is doing an amazing job really focusing in on getting a great camera for photography for this entry level audience, avoiding the video features for that same audience I think is a huge mistake. They don't have to give great video features to these kinds of cameras, but they need to give some of the basic ones like 24 frames per second. Come on, Canon. Come on. You can put that in there. Biggest opportunity that I think Canon missed with the video functions on this camera is that record limit. Even if all the video functions stay exactly the same, but all they change is the 30 minute record limit. Like the family shooters and casual shooters all over the world are gonna love this camera because they can use it to film their entire recital that their daughter's dancing around in or their son's or daughter's soccer game or you know, they can film all of the family things. You know those stupid, terrible things with the camcorders? They don't have to have a camcorder and a camera. If they didn't have the 30 minute record limit, they would have one camera that would do those things. Canon really missed the ball with that. So let's sum it all up. Is it a good camera? Yes. If you're just getting into photography, you don't have a lot of money to spend. Yeah, it's an awesome camera. It actually, it's, it's not a bad camera at all. No, it's not a good camera if you're a professional or if you want functions in a camera that it doesn't provide, then obviously it's not the camera for you. So as far as if you should get one or not, if you're a professional and you don't need a second body or you already have a second body, then you don't need it. But if you're just looking to get into photography, this is a great camera. It's a full frame camera. You can get some amazing lenses for this. And since they are actually including the adapter with the camera, you can get some inexpensive but really good lenses from their DSLR lineup. And I would say this, if you are a photographer who is really upset with the feature set of this camera because you really needed something more, you wanted something more from Canon. Think about it this way. If you were going to buy your niece or nephew a camera because they really, really want to start photography and they want to hang out with you and learn photography, photography now, not video, but photography, this would be a good camera for you to get them. This is the perfect camera to put in their hands. This is the perfect camera for that kind of shooter. If you like this video, you can do the thing where the thumb goes up. If you did not like this video, you can do the thing where the thumb goes down and then everybody in the room is gonna look at you and they're gonna squint, angry squints. I do a video like this every week, so if you wanna see more like this and tutorials and things like that, go ahead and click the subscribe thing and ring the bell because if you don't ring the bell, it's not gonna work and we want it to work. If you wanna see more stuff, obviously you want it to work. So ring the bell, dang it. Ring that bell. And that's everything I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. So now you can go and take your camera, whatever camera it may be, a good one, a bad one, a cell phone, doesn't matter. You take that camera out into the world and you go make something awesome. Yeah.